Hey, Jason. Yes, Cam. What time is it? It's time for... Entertainment News. Come welcome to the show. And today we have the top five things that Mr. Greg Travis shared with us. Now, for those of you who missed the episode, Greg Travis is a director, writer, and producer based out of Nashville, Tennessee. He's worked with CMT, GAC, E, Fox News for about 20 to 30 years. He's interviewed everybody from you know Whitney Houston to His every country interview. artist. His first interview was Whitney Houston. Yeah. And he taught us a couple of things about film and entertainment that we think you'll find valuable. Number one is to be prepared. One. I've been working with startup companies for a little while out here in the Valley, and it's like, it's like, you know, that's the one thing you do is you learn your pitch. You know, you learn your 30 second elevator pitch on whatever it is. And you always have that in the back of your head. Right. And then whenever you need to, you can pull that out, you know, or whatever. And that comes in handy for anything. I mean, that comes in handy in job interviews, comes in handy in, in pitching TV ideas. It comes in handy in you know, interviewing people, you know, wh whatever it happens to be. It's really important. I've noticed that even in working with clients or customers, especially when mm -hmm. I'm pitching commercial ideas, I have to be able to share that idea really concisely and really well. And not even just one idea, because you never know who you're going to meet, right? Right. And so somebody might be interested in an adventure. Someone might want a documentary. Someone might want something else. So uh, I think always having in your mind your ideas prepared and so that and know them really, really well so that you can pitch those ideas when that moment comes. And if you're trying to pitch something just off the top of your head, you might miss a key ingredient. And that's the ingredient that the uh, person you're pitching to might be looking for. And it's there, but you just haven't mentioned it. So yeah, be prepared. Yeah, and also you know, if someone thinks, oh, that idea has been done before, one thing I think you can think of about your idea is what is your worldview and the way you experience that idea and something new and fresh that you can bring to it. So even if fresh, that person fresh is so exciting to me, I think that deserves number two, getting <laughs> where to get new ideas. Number two. In the time, obviously you've been doing interviews, editing, putting together stories. I know you've also come up with a lot of your own ideas working with the different networks. So uh, first of all, like, how do you come up with an idea and how do you know, like, hey, this is actually a good idea? Like, what's the thing that tells you, like, oh, I've got it. This is a great idea. Like, where does that come from? So there's a lot of great ideas. And for me, it's like when I have an idea or I talk, I talk to friends all the time that are producers in L.A. and, and New York. And we're always sort of brainstorming, you know, whenever we see something that's like, ah, oh, this is spurring an idea. Um, uh, the first thing I do is write it down and then I go research and see if that's been done. Like right. has somebody right. done that, you know, um, and IMDb is a great source, uh, Wikipedia. I mean, just, you know, you can look up documentaries easily on Google, but, um, but I always try to look for like, okay, has that been done? And if somebody did do it, you know, could you do it differently or, you know, make it better? There's like a checklist, you know, okay, is it a great idea? Yes. Is Can we do a pitch deck that'll get people interested? Yes. You know, can we access the footage and all the archival uh, photos or whatever? Can we purchase them? Is there enough in the licensing budget to, you know, purchase, you know, photos from Getty Images or, you know, from AP? And and then you sort of budget all that stuff in and then you start throwing it out to a network. So so there's a ton of research and development that goes in, you know, to any sort of pitch long before it gets to a network. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You taking notes? I've got an idea. Shh. Oh, we're back on. Waiting patiently for okay. Cam's idea. Just writing down ideas. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, so I, I like the idea, you know, where ideas come from. What are ideas? Mm -hmm. And I almost think there's an ethereal ideas that exist almost like in a plane out. Everybody can access them. Yeah, they're like right. almost radio waves that float around. Just who because, gets it first? Exactly, because right. sometimes you'll have someone that has an idea on this side of the planet and the same person has the same idea at the same. Right. Like, why hadn't that been thought of before? It's like, it's almost like, there's a download of ideas for different eras and seasons and whoever's antenna is aware and attuned and looking for it. Those are going to be the first people to find it. It's almost like gold, except it's in the sky, you know? 
And, uh, and, uh, those ideas, I was thinking, I, I just talked to you a minute ago, like, where do you get your ideas? And you're, you said on the crapper, but you know, whatever your best ideas came <laughs> well, from. Well, I wasn't quite so elegant when I said it, but <laughs> for, for by, me, by the way, fun fact, here's an extra fact for you. Let's hear crapper is actually the name of the person that invented the toilet crapper used to be a toilet name so it's Are not really serious? it's not really what you do on the toilet the name of the person forever became synonymous with what you do on the toilet that's where the name i don't know if i'd want from. my name like on that idea yeah, like it's a, it's a great it's invention crapper. but i'm just gonna keep my name i was off in of seattle it. and they had this little museum piece there and they had an original crapper toilet and what yeah, yes it wasn't a toilet museum but it was in a museum and it showed the whole story about crapper so I'm so, going to use the crapper as a real thing. Exactly. It is. It's the person's name, not what you do. So anyway, Most back to ideas. Fact you learned today. I think <laughs> a lot of my ideas, the best ideas I get come when I'm when I'm walking. There's something about being in motion. If you're stuck mm -hmm. and you can't get past the Chinese, night, Chinese know, food does it every time, especially so, when I'm walking. Do we have any groaning sound effects you oh, can yeah. pull uh, into the show? Uh, uh, hey, that was a good one. <laughs> uh, uh. So when, when you're walking, you get ideas. Yeah, I think, you know, if you get stuck and you're trying to sit there at your computer and you're like, I'm not getting an idea, oh, and I yeah, just get, yeah. get up and take a walk. Just go walk and something about that process, you know, frees up your mind. I don't know why. Well, I, I think it's I think it's because you're you're increasing your visual stimulation, whether it's uh, stimulation, stimulation. Is that a word? Anyway, I'm going <laughs> to stimulate that one up, especially when you walk outside and you get the fresh air and the nature and all you've got all the creation around you you're going to get more creative and 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 be attuned to more ideas well maybe again like you just said it goes back to that the ideas are there and whoever's antenna is up and aware and something about that process walking maybe it opens you up to those ideas wow and stimulation from the outside that's Sim fascinating. Simulation or whatever the word that you said before. Know. Let's move on to number three. Which <laughs> number is, three. Uh, pitch deck. Three. And what's uh, a pitch deck for anyone that doesn't know? What's that? Pitch deck for 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 us is like I would say it could be a PowerPoint. It could be you know just like um, I'll generally send mine out as PowerPoint or P or actually um, PDF documents. It's like a like a five to 10 page, just overview. Of, well, what has to go in it? I know yeah, I've heard like, it has to be a synopsis. You have to have a log line. You have to have, are you doing the, like an exact format or you just, what do you think? Kind you of like a can treatment? do that. The whole treatment is that's, right. that's sort of getting into treatment, but it's more so just pitching the idea. And you don't really like, I won't take the time to develop a whole long treatment of okay. episode breakdowns or arc of episodes or anything until we at least have the basic concept and we have somebody interested, you know, mm. and, um, and the way like within the, the documentary world is, is, you know, you can come up with a ton of great ideas, but you've got to have access to footage or, mm -hmm. you know, to access to something. So that's the next phase is, you know, you can put together a deck um, and there's different types of decks. You, you can put a deck together that would get the people who own the footage interested in working with you, you know, to put something together. And then you create a secondary deck that then would pitch it to a network. So, and so the first one might be the pitch to get the people interested that who you're going to need in order to make the documentary possible. Once you've yeah. kind of confirmed that, now we're going to approach the network because I've got original Elvis footage that's never been used before. Now yeah. I know so and so might be interested in this. I've got them on board with that deck. Now let's create a new deck for XYZ organization or okay. Exactly. I, I, a good example lately that happened is Summer of Soul. Uh, documentary. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, that uh, I believe it's on HBO uh, or Amazon Prime, but it it won the Oscar for best music documentary, and they won a Grammy for the soundtrack uh, on it. Uh, it was Questlove uh, put it, but somebody came to him and they had found this old footage of a concert in Harlem that happened in the night early seventies, and it was a whole concert that had Sly and the Family Stone and like uh, Stevie Wonder and just a ton of artists. And they were doing this concert as it was like to bring Harlem together as a community. 
So it had social impact, you know, attached to it. So when you put it, so what they did, which was absolutely brilliant, is they took it and put it in the social context of today's world with Black Lives Matter and mm -hmm. and with all the social, you know, sort of injustice that's happening. And they used that concert as the how it was then and then how things have changed now or have, they, you know, and that was just an amazing approach to a music documentary. And it paid off because they won the Oscar. Yeah, sometimes uh working on my PowerPoint. That is the PowerPoint. <laughs> oh, that was the one. That was the one right there. PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah. I I think uh, uh pitch pitch decks are also I think there's a verbal pitch deck which goes back mm -hmm. to the earlier part about being prepared so you can do your you know you can do your quick pitch right your mm -hmm. elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. There's verbal pitches where you he has an idea like this. Hey, I've got some old footage. You meet at a party. You're talking again. I've got some footage I, I want to talk to you about because here it is. You know, you can do a verbal pitch and then you do a quick pitches, which we've done for, you know, you can have a one page pitch for music videos, maybe two or three pages. And they're saying, what is the right way for a pitch deck? I think there is right. There are correct ways for pitch decks for companies and for businesses because they're looking for certain things. And I think in a pitch deck for a video or a film, there's almost like interest to me. What's the idea? What's the concept? Why should I care? What makes me care? What's going to be the draw? Right. And so it's almost like if you can hook them in that pitch deck in the show, that's the show itself, the energy behind it, the idea behind it, and the excitement about why I should care. So uh, for his, his case there, you know, they're looking at that found footage stuff as a documentarian. Like, how can we tell this new story? What's a new way to look at this this old footage? Can we take concerts that were done by like Johnny, you know, with um, Johnny Cash in a, in a prison? You know, can we take that old footage and then relook at how we apply that today to today through documentaries? Like, how does that apply to society today? And have we changed it all? Have we solved this problem? It's that's and a it's, a, it's a way stuff. to get a current generation mm -hmm. interested in things of the past because you're mm -hmm. viewing it through the, the lens of today. Right. You're making it relevant to the right. audience who's watching it today. Exactly. And sort of like what we do is it's gleaning the lessons from the people who have done it and making it applicable to the people today. And then like Greg had said, there's different pitches. He does one pitch that you're doing to people that you want to get interested. So right now I'm working on another Star Wars fan film. It's fun, but a lot of people, I need them to volunteer their right. time and energy and efforts and everything. So they have to believe in my team. They have to believe in the idea and it has to be something they're excited and want to be a part of. So I think it's in that process of sharing those ideas that you get your team. And then now that I have a team together, then I go and I can pitch that. Like, here's our team. We've got these people on board. This guy, this guy worked on Star Wars. These guys have done this. You know, we need some funds or we need to, you know, we want to distribute this. So pitch deck, uh, there is no right or wrong way. There's a lot of places you can look online. Uh, that wrong way would be if it's just boring, just text, like, <laughs> playing right. like add pictures to it add photos to it uh have video examples uh powerpoints if you're doing in room pitches they can be really helpful and you can also play videos in your powerpoint <laughs> and you want your uh, you want your deck to be solid so the best way to do that deck screws then you're gonna have a solid deck <laughs> why do you have a <laughs> deck screw four? four number four let's work with a purpose <laughs> I think that's the best part of working in this business is like when you see the payoff of something connecting with people emotionally. Um, yeah. I, my good friend Jeanette Jolly and I, we were both adopted. She's and amazing. So we, we, Jeanette, you know Jeanette. She's Oh, uh, yes. Amazing. Uh, we, we've always had this idea. We want to do something with adoption, you know, and, and that's a very personal journey for both of us. And, oh, uh, yeah. And so, um, so we... Uh, I, I'm sure you're familiar with Stephen Curtis Chapman and uh -huh. he has yeah, an and organization son. called Show Hope, and then they, yep. they, they help show you know get get uh, uh, children adopted uh, with families, and and so we wound up working with him uh, on a few pretty big presentations that we're doing, and um, and we we told some stories, and actually Jeanette went to China with them for to see some of the hospitals, which was heartbreaking, you know. Of mm -hmm. so many of the kids that go un unadopted and right. and um and so we put all this content together and we made this sort of little documentary look at you know at, at one particular child and her journey 
and we uh, it was at the Skimmerhorn Center in Nashville, which is like the beautiful opera house or whatever there. And we went in and they had a big fundraiser dinner and they showed this video there. And I just remember being in there and not a dry eye in the house. And the so whole awesome. place was just like, I mean, it was like, it was so powerful. Like, you know, yeah. it, was like, it was better than anything I think I've ever done on TV. It was like, yeah. that's, that's what makes this business. There's a lot of craziness in this business, yeah. but when you can actually make a difference with something. Yeah. Meaningful. It's making it, it meaningful. That's when yeah. it's like, those are the most satisfying, I think, projects, you know, when you can do something that you actually see the good that it has done. And yeah. impacted people's lives in some way. Purpose, being uh, attached to a cause or affecting change, make a difference. You know, you're given these talents to do something, so make a difference with them. It's very important. What is the purpose of art? What is the purpose of a story? And I think it's all things, I think, go together to help us improve who we are as people and who we are as a society. And I think if art is done really well, mm -hmm. it challenges the viewer, it challenges the listener it exposes them to a deeper level of self-consciousness and of human consciousness. Right. And it, it enables us to open up our minds to possibly changing ourselves and the lessons that are there, right? I've done a lot of commercials. I've done a lot of things that I, I don't really, on the surface, I don't really you know care about them. It's just, okay, it's a job. Mm -hmm. If you do that time and time and time again, and that's what you do for every single every single project, and you never see the result, you never see the effect on the on your audience. I think you're you're going to start to lose that that passion and that burning pa you know that passion for what you're doing in anything. And I think, like for me, I like to go. I'll I'll vo I'll volunteer my time to go on a field. I'll, I'll do something maybe with the local church that's doing something right. overseas, or maybe an NGO, or maybe like recently I went to Ukraine to go shoot some stuff with the refugees that are coming for a company that's that's building housing and sheltering in Western Ukraine. So it's something that's important to me. It's passion. I see firsthand the effect that my work has in it, and it gives me an encouragement and excitement to approach everything else. It revitalizes the desire I have. And it connects me with those greatest, deeper parts. And that's when I can do something I, and I can visually see the impact on the people I'm doing it for. There was a, a study done a long time ago. I can't, I can't remember the specific study, but it, it basically involved people digging trenches or ditches. And they were given a reason why, one group was given a reason why they're doing it. And they got through it amazingly. Another uh, one was just saying, dig here. Okay, then fill up the hole. Okay, dig here, then fill up that hole. And they got depressed. They got angry. They got because they had no purpose as to why they were doing it. They thought they were just doing busy work. And so that's a, it's a base need in us. Like we need to know why, what change we're making, that, that what we're doing is actually making a change in society. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. We're not, we're not satisfied. Yeah, and I I never feel satisfied in the long run if I don't feel like there's a reason why I'm why I'm doing something. It doesn't have an impact, and a lot of times, even in commercials or things I'm creating for clients, I think that's one of the major things I'm always looking for. I'm looking for what is the personal connection to people, and why mm -hmm. does what they do matter? Because every company actually does something that ha that matters. If you're making a cheeseburger, yeah, it's just a cheeseburger, but ultimately you're, you can be bringing families together around the table. You're mm -hmm. keeping people the energy they need to get their jobs done. There's always, there's something you can find that can connect people to, to why you're doing it and, and a greater purpose. So I think what's one of the major things I'm always looking for is, you know, we want to advertise this car and I, I'm, I'm like, why is this car relevant? What makes this company or this product relevant? And that's the why is the real connector, I think, with people. So the product is like, oh, cool, that's a cool product, but why do I care about it? And I, I think some people I've heard said, no, I don't think why is the most important question. I think it is. I think mm -hmm. why is the number one most important question in my mind. It, it's the driver behind everything. So. And the next point is to listen. Mm. to the answers to those questions. Yeah, so any five. And so I know as an interviewer, you're always thinking like, what do I need to start off with? Where do I need to take the story? And then, you know, that button, like I need a button on this that's a good conclusion to the end. Well, what kind of thing do you do when you're 
uh, to to find those buttons or those connector pieces, what are you looking for in an interview to find those connectors between ideas and then the conclusion? Like, how do you wrap up a good interview with a strong like boom button? I think that I think it's all listening. Like that's that's one of the like I've worked with so many journalists over the years, and and like you know while the person would be answering the question they're like not even looking at them. They're looking down at their piece of paper to see what their next question is. <laughs> and then the person finishes the question with a perfect lead out, you know, into a new question, ah. a line of questioning, and they don't follow up. And yeah. and they just jump to the next thing. Um, and so I've seen that happen so many times. And I think that's something young journalists sort of get lost with. You know, they, they, they're so focused on getting those, you know, specific things that they lose track of just conversational, you know, tone. Mm. And it's so, a real story. Exactly. And so yeah. I think it's just listening and sort of knowing when you have something. Been there, done that. I spent a large part of my career as both an investigative journalist and then an entertainment journalist. And it's so important. I would run into reporters all the time and uh, even being a, a, a camera person on, on some of these interviews and the reporter would miss some of the best substance in that interview because they would just go on to their next question. They weren't even listening uh, to the answer. And whenever I do an interview, you know, I've got some questions ready, but I just let it flow because it really is about being a conversation. You go places in interviews that you would never get to if you didn't listen. Listening is, I think, the number one skill that an interviewer needs to have. If you want to hear the full version of this, we have two episodes with Greg Travis. You can check them out on Entertainment Dudes. We have them in earlier podcasts on YouTube. But if you want to hear the full version in podcast form, you can listen on Spotify. You can check us out on uh, iTunes or anywhere where you have your podcasts. Or Go to watch.entertainmentdudes.com. It will take you to a list of everywhere all our content is available. Yes, and if you want some merch, you can go to merch.entertainmentdudes.com where you can check out, pick up some of these really cool shirts if you want cams in my face on your, hey, you're wearing yours today too, man. That was just completely spontaneous. But <laughs> thanks for joining us for another episode of Entertainment Dudes. I'm All host, right. Jason Crossman. And this, wait, oh, we're in the I'm Cam room? Cornelius. You're Jason, Jason Crossman. And you yeah. need to be checking out some of our other videos and subscribe and, and stuff like that if you're really There they are. To. There's some yeah. right there. You got to definitely check those videos out. Yep, check them out. Yeah, you're going to like them. You are going to like them. Do it. Like them now. Like them now.